And greetings to Capsom TV. I am Dr. Anthony Clark. You can find us on our YouTube channel at KAPC SOMTV. Please be so kind to like, to share, and subscribe to our channel for this blessed us so we can continue to be a blessing to you in your everyday life for your spiritual enrichment edification. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Anthony Clark. Thank you for turning on, tuning in, and turning up to the Kingdom Frequency here where we always have a fresh revelation for your spirit, soul, and body directly from the courtroom of heaven. We want to bless all of you out there who are listening and all those who are in here, we speak apostolic and prophetically the blessing of the Lord upon you that maketh you rich. The Lord maketh you rich, and he, the Lord, adds no sorrow, no struggle, no trouble, no sickness, no disease, no grief, no fear, no failure, or no defeat with it. Now, we've been talking about, uh, last time we talked about a uh, kingdom reminder, don't let the things of this world stop you from being blessed with God's best, part one. And today we're going to start off where we left off. The last time we talked about uh, what the little things were, they're, they're little foxes, really. And the little foxes are the little bitty things uh, that are compromises that are hidden deep within your the areas of your spirit and your soul where your lives where you have not allowed the the Christ of the victory of Christ on the cross to take over your life. He wants every area of your life. He won't be second best. He'll be first or he won't be none at all. Say amen to that. And so there's a lot of time where there's a little foxes that spoils things. And in our our um, uh, foundation scripture, we took that from uh, Solomon, Song of Solomon 2 and 15, and it read, take the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. In other words, we must catch these little foxes that compromise, causes us to compromise the things that are in our heart, the area of our lives, I'm repeating it, where we have not allowed Christ to have the first and the right of way. And they, they hide themselves and they come out uh, in demonic form under the cover of darkness secretly. And they work under the cover of darkness behind the scenes. Most people don't see them. They are not necessarily the things that are right up in front of your face, like the big sins, uh, or the big stuff like murder or getting drunk and so on and so forth. It's the little bitty thing that destroy you from being productive in your everyday life or your walk in the Lord. So we talked about last time pride. We talked about jealousy. Wow. We talked about being offended so easily. And we also talked about last time hidden agenda a lot of times you you can't have hidden agendas and and walk in the things of God we cannot continue to be used by God if we have hidden agendas and hidden motives somewhere we will fail or fall and be destroyed we have to have pure motives in the very presence of God the pure motives of loving people of uh, establishing the kingdom in the hearts and the minds of people and not establish our own platform or our own kingdom. Wow. Dr. Clark is not here to establish his own kingdom or his own platform. I'm here to, to exercise my assignment to, to render uh, due benevolence to the Lord for the assignment that he's given me. And I suggest that you tag along and, and be able to do the same thing. So you can't say, God, I want you to use me so great so I have this great big ministry and everybody will look up to me and say how great I am. Already your agenda is wrong and you will fail. Now today we want to start off, uh, we read our foundation scriptures. Today we want to start off with insecurities in the book of Exodus. And I will be teaching it from the New King James Version and it reads as such. And we're just going to do four of them today. We're going to do the... Uh, insecurities 
uh, amen, uh, this is one of the little things that will stop you from, from being blessed with God's best. It's deceiving yourself. That's another one that will stop you from being blessed with God's best. Unforgiveness is another one that will stop you from being blessed with God's best. And the last one we're going to do today is bitterness. And bitterness is another one. All right. Now, so people who are used by God are usually the, the most insecure people uh, that you ever meet, particularly if they are ministers like myself. Wow. In Exodus 4, 10 through 16, it reads, And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither uh, uh, I, I, am I able to speak. You know, you have spoken unto your servant, Ethan, but I'm slow of speech, and I'm slow of the tongue. And the Lord said to, uh, uh, to Moses, Who has made the mouth, or who has made the dumb, or the deaf, or the sin, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and I will teach you what to say. There are a lot of times we'll say insecure in the assignments or the gifts and the talents that the Lord give us, and we want to give God an excuse. And so uh, God told Moses he, said he would anoint and heal his mouth. He will anoint. And he will heal your mouth. If you consider yourself inadequate and you are unable to fulfill that assignment, the Bible does say that he, have, who, he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful and to complete that work. In other words, he will never give you an assignment in this earth realm from the kingdom as a kingdom believer without employing you or uh, to deploy you and without doing that, without giving you the authority authority and the power for you to be able to, to carry that out for him. Wow, just like he did Jesus when he came. So, but Moses was still seeing all his shortcomings and Moses was still looking at his faults, natural fault. We don't look at ourselves, for our, our strength or our abilities on the natural, from the outside. We look at the abilities on the inside. God invested so much of himself in us through Adam before the fall or before the foundation of the world. And when we come into Christ and we come into the kingdom of God, what happens is that all of those gifts and all those callings and all those talents are, are reactivated. You are reintroduced to who you are in the kingdom. You are reintroduced to, uh, to the kingdom, the kingdom in you. And then most of all, you are reintroduced to your original self, who you are. A lot of people in the world are they're trying to mimic other people and they're trying to be like this person they're trying to be like that person and God is saying all I want you to do is do the assignment that I've given you don't be insecure don't think that you are inadequate I'm not going to ask you to do something or command you to do something without giving you all the ability that you need the Bible said he has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and being just like Christ through the knowledge of him that called you to glory and excellence he calls you the glory and excellence. Every human being, black, brown, red, yellow, white, male, female, doesn't make any difference. The babies and the young people. That's my pet peeve. And so uh, you are able to be able to do whatever. It doesn't make any difference what age. God said, I, well, you might say, well, I'm, I'm getting up in age and I'm running out of time. Well, God said, I'm the redeemer of the time. I'm the one that created time. So it's never too late to fulfill your destiny and your purpose. And so uh, uh, he would anoint his mouth and then we can get so tied up in our shortcomings and our insecurities and our faults that we cannot even let God use us. We, we can't even allow God to heal us and take care of the areas that are lacking because of our insecurity or our low self-esteem. Don't be ashamed of who you are, black, brown, red, yellow, white, male or female. Don't make no difference. God loves you so much that he, he purposed and planned your destiny before you were in your mother's womb. As I was saying, one of my spiritual daughters earlier, before you, uh, before you spit or uh, one of those children out that look so much like their mother. Wow, did I say that? Yes, I did. All right, so he can't do that. And he said, oh, Lord, I pray 
by the hand of him who, uh, who you will send. And the anger of the Lord was, was a kindled or started against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the, the Levite or the high priest your brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, look, he comes from uh, here to meet you. And then when he sees him, he will be glad in his heart. And you shall speak to Aaron and put my words in his mouth. And I will be the, your mouth and with his mouth. And I will teach you what you shall do. And he shall speak uh, as your spokesman unto my people. And he shall be and even he shall be to you uh, instead of a mouth. And you shall be to him instead of God. In other words, Moses actually made God angry. You don't want to make God angry. Especially when he's giving you an assignment, you're giving him all those natural excuses. No, go on. And so God told him, he was God. He said, I'm the one who created the tongue. I'm one who created the mouth. God was asking Moses, and he is asking us, if, if he could heal him and make it better. God, could he not touch my, uh, his mouth or your mouth and give him or give you an ability to speak? Could he not take all of your weaknesses and all of your shortcomings and make them strong, make them strength in you? Could he not do these wonderful things in the life of Moses or you because he was God? He's God all by himself. His name is Yahweh. He's called I Am. He said, I am whatever you need me to be whenever you need me to be it. Wow. If we would take that and know that uh, there's nothing too hard for God, nothing too hard for him. Nobody has much power or authority or the ability. He's called El Shaddai Almighty. He's called El Elyon, the Most High God. I mean, there's no one higher than him. And so when he made him angry, he, uh, he's, uh, let me tell you something. It was a great hindrance to Moses in, in the years to come because Aaron stood against Moses. Aaron and his sister Miriam stood against him in a lot of things that God wanted him to do. Aaron was the one who allowed the golden calf to be made. Aaron was the one who, uh, uh, of those who uh, didn't stop the people from criticizing Moses or from marrying the Ethiopian woman. He actually helped Moses vine become uh, uh, become uh, because of his insecurity. One way to over, overcome insecurity, sons and daughters of God, is to know that God can deal with your insecurity and heal those parts of your lives and my life. We have to allow God to do that, and if we will, then he will take care of the, our insecurity by making us be, in, be secure in him and not insecure in him. Did I say that? We need to know who is our source. Abba, say Abba. Abba means the only source. So if we, know, if we know that he is our source, he is our master, and he is the creator of everything, then he can create or recreate any lack or deficiency that we may have on the spot. Say on the spot. Wow. And now in Judge 6 and 15, he said to him, Oh, my Lord, well, where shall I serve Israel? Look, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. He had given Gideon an assignment. Why am I talk, teaching from the Old Testament? Because a lot of uh, things in the Old Testament are references that the apostle used for the New Testament. Why? And we use them all of the time. The angel of the Lord came to a, a man named Gideon, told Gideon, and he sp immediately spoke out his insecurity. God, how can you ever use me? I'm a poor man. I come from a poor family. I'm the poorest of the poor. Those words was hindering or uh, uh, blocking what God wanted to do in his life. Even if you're saying that or you around somebody that's saying that, that hinders what God wants to do in your life. The Lord was good to keep working with him. Thank God for his grace that he keeps working with us even though we are insecure in our insecurity. Thank God he keeps working with us. We need to know what he, that he loves us, that we are important to him, that he is God, that he is Yahweh Elohim and can fulfill the inner lack or deficiency in our life. Now, the areas where we see lack can become our strength because of God. I've seen God do awesome things with people. I've seen him take people who could not sing and give them a voice to sing. And you know, there's a lot of people who may have started out like they was, they was cracking. I, I call it cracker lack and they couldn't do, they couldn't hear the note. But when God got through them, they had a gift. God can change anything in any area of your life. So we 
don't need to have any security, the insecurity. So I have known that. And then our uh, uh, insecurity uh, and our lacks become our strength when God gives us the talent and God gives us the ability that we need if we just turn them over to him. If God is calling us uh, or God is calling you, he will equip you. Don't think for a minute that he's going to call you and then expect you to do something he's not going to. I already said this already. He's not going to. Uh, equip you to do sure you may you you won't be able to do it in your own strength or in your own natural ability but he will give you the equipment he will give you all the tools he will bless you and give you the ability and at some point in your life you're gonna have to trust the Lord to be God in your life now number six uh, we can deceive ourselves and the word says we can Look with me right quick to James 1, 19 to 26. And it goes on and it says, Why, my beloved brothers and sisters, let every man be swift to hear, be slow to speak, and slow to get angry. For the anger of man does not work the righteousness of God or God's way of being and doing right. So, Lay apart, because of this, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. The word of God, the living word is what able to save or redeem your mind, is able to restore your mind to the mind of Christ. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed from the inside out by the renewing of your mind. We have to renew our mind. Well, I call it here, caps on shift our thinking every single day. It's always going to come a, a situation where the enemy wants to distract you or to discourage you or to bring something in your life where you take your focus focus off of God and put your focus on your natural ability or your inability. Wow, let's go on. And so he said for, uh, I want to turn there uh, to uh, James 1, 19 through 26 in the, oh, I'm already there. In the, um, in the Passion Translation. And where we left off at, uh, it said, my dear brothers and sisters, take this to heart. Be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to become angry. For a human anger is never a, 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 the right tool to promote God's righteous purpose. Well, this is why we abandon everything that's impure in our mind and impure in our spirit and all forms of evil and all for, forms of wicked conduct or behavior. Instead, with all forms, uh, with a sensitive spirit. Now, we got to be sensitive to the spirit. If you don't be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, then you will miss out on something. I, I know growing up, in, uh, uh, as long as I've been in this and doing, as long as I've been doing it, I missed a lot of things because I was not as sensitive as I am now. And when you are very sensitive or reverence in the Holy Spirit, remain humble, open, and teachable so the Holy Spirit can teach you something. A lot of times we think after we got, we got a little bit, we think we know at all but we don't there's so much look at your neighbor said there's so much more yeah there's so much more that God wants for us instead of what we are relying on now so it goes on and it says here as we get on down uh, we absorb God's word, which has been implanted within your nature. God's word has been implanted in your spirit. You were born of the word, the washing of the word, and the spirit of the Lord. For the word of life has power to deliver you continuously. Wow. All right. Don't just listen to the word of truth and don't act on it or respond to the word, sons and daughters of God. For that is the, the way of, of self-deception. That's how you deceive yourself. So always let the word become like uh, uh, written poetry or uh, poem and fulfilled in your life. If you listen to the word and don't live out the message that you hear, you, you look, look like a person who, who looks at themselves in the mirror to find out, the see the reflection of their faith in the beginning, and you see how God sees you in the mirror of the word. But then you go out and you forget your are you forget who is your source. You forget where you came from. But those who look uh, deeply into the law, 
law of the word of God are fascinated by and respond to the truth of the word that they hear and they are empowered by it and they experience God's blessing in all they do. Well, that's what we're talking about. Don't let the little things of this world stop you from being blessed with God's best. Wow. And so uh, let's go on to verse 26. If someone believes that they have a relationship with God but fails to watch or guard your words of your mouth, then you are deceiving yourself. You've, you've drifted away or, and, and you've left. You've been distracted and you are shallow and empty. I don't want to be shallow and I don't want to be empty. I don't know about you. So according to the word of God, we can deceive ourselves. We can get the wrong idea about God. We can get the wrong idea about ourselves and we can get the wrong idea about others. That this, there's a very um, addictive uh, a uh, feeling that comes with hearing uh, the anointed word of God being preached and teach. People would take that and think that they have everything that they need because they went to the house of God, heard a message from a man or woman of God that thrilled them or that excited them. But then when they leave, Amen. As soon as they leave they, and, and don't do a thing that was preached, they don't act on the word, they still believe they, they have it. They still believe they got the benefit of it. You don't get the benefit because you just hear it. You get the benefit of it when you hear the word, preach and teach, and then act on that word. Say act on the word. The man who is an actor of the word is a man who shall be blessed. That means male or female. It's important that we are actors of the word and not just hearing the word because when we do that, we deceive ourselves. We're fooling ourselves, amen, so that we don't get blessed. The only person who gets blessed is the person who acts on the word. It's work to do God's word. Believe me, I'm telling you. The person shall be blessed in everything that they do. Look at the parable of the man who built his house upon the rock and the, and the, and the, uh, the man or the woman who built his or her. It's talking about your life. On the sand, that, that person would build a, uh, uh, that, the person who built on the rock is the person who heard the word and did it. The person who built their life on sand is the person who heard the word and didn't act on it. It didn't apply it to their everyday life. They both heard the same word, but one's life was destroyed and the other's life was secure. Wow. What is the difference? One did the word, acted on the word, did what was preached and taught, the other didn't. Wow. Don't think because you, uh, that you know about the trouble of sin, something, daughter of God, and how bad it is in your life, it will keep you from sinning. You have to do it. You, ha you have to act on the word of God. You have to act on the things that you know. Well, until you act on the word, you don't see the full blessing of the Lord. Blessing comes from the Hebrew word, berakah, and it means an empowered meant to succeed in all areas. The little things of the little foxes, they will come in and they will destroy what you have sown, the seed you have sown. And that could make a big change in the lives of yourself, your loved ones, and others. People are going are not going to see Jesus in you because you know about Jesus or because you uh, uh, or know him. You know about him or know him. They will see Jesus in you because you are walking in him every single day. You are walking with him every day. You know him as your Lord. You know him as your Savior. You are living for God. If God is living in you, it's no longer you are agreeing with it in your mindset. Now it's a real everyday experience. God wants us to overcome the pride. God wants us to overcome the jealousy. God wants us to overcome the offenses. God wants us to overcome the hidden agendas, the insecurity and deceiving ourselves. These are the areas that destroy the fruit of love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, gentleness, kindness, and so on and so forth in your everyday life. These are the things that will stop that from, 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 from uh, coming forth. It will stop the investment that God has invested in your everyday life. I'm stumbling a little bit. I'm excited. I do that when I'm excited about this. Now, let's go on and let's finish up here. So anything that's good that could possibly happen in your life won't happen because these little foxes or these little, these little things stop you and they block you. Now, in uh, unforgiveness, look at... Um, 
Look at Matthew uh, 6, 12 through 15. We're going to be out of time, Charlie. And the Bible says, and forgive us our sins as we forgive our, uh, those who sin against us. And let us not be led into te temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. But if you forgive, now watch it. If you forgive people their sins against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you your sin. But if you forgive not uh, their wrongs or their trespasses against you or their sins against you, neither will your Father forgive yours. So we have to forgive. Our forgiveness comes as we forgive other sons and daughters of God. And as we release others, we are released. Unforgiveness will not hurt the other person as much as it will hurt you. Wow, did I say that? Many, a lot of times someone can hold something towards you and you don't even know what you've done. Though you are missing, uh, though, uh, you are missing out on that person's relationship, what, what you are really doing is experience a lack between you and God. That's the greatest deficit in this situation. Now look at Matthew 18, 23 to 25. Well, 35. It says, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain man or a certain king who went about uh, to take account of his servant. We uh, illustrated this one quite a bit. I I'm going to read that from the, uh, from the uh, Passion Translation that will give, uh, uh, give us a better rendition of it Matthew 18 23 through 35 and it goes on to say the lesson of forgiveness is, is in heaven's kingdom can be illustrated like this there was once a king who had servants who had borrowed money from the royal treasury he decided to settle accounts with each of them and as he began the process it came to his attention that one of his servants owed him a billion dollars that's a whole lot of money. So he summoned the servant before him and said to him, pay me what you owe me. And when the servant was not able to repay the debt, that's a lot of money to be in debt to somebody. And then he said, pay me. And the servant said, uh, when he was unable to pay the debt, the king ordered that him and his wife and his kids, everybody was thrown uh, in jail and everything that they owned as payment toward the debt. And so the servant threw himself down in front of the king and said, face down at his master's feet and begged him for mercy. Please be patient with me. Just give me more time and I will pay you everything I owe you. Upon hearing this, please, or this, this case, the king had compassion or mercy on his servant and released him and forgave all, the entire debt. Now for somebody to forgive a billion dollars, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of debt. Now watch this. No sooner had the servant left when he met one of his fellow servants or fellow co-workers who owed him $20,000. Now $20,000 is chump change compared to a billion dollars. Say amen to that. All right. And so he took him by the throat and began to choke him and said, you better pay me right now everything you owe me. And so his fellow servant or co-worker threw him face down at his feet and begged, please be patient with me. If you just give me a little more time, I'll repay everything I owe you. But the one who had the, the debt forgiven stubbornly refused to forgive what was owed him while he had his fellow servant and co-worker thrown into prison and commanded that uh, he remain there until he repaid. He threw his, the man's wife, his children, everybody into jail. Watch it. And when his other co-workers saw what was going on, they were angry and they went to the king and told the king the whole story. And the king said to him, you scoundrel, you lazy, shiftless, wicked servant. Now that's what I'm paraphrasing that in modern day vernacular. He said, he said, he said, he said, is, uh, he said, uh, is this the way that you respond to my mercy? Because you begged me and, and, and I forgave you the, uh, the massive debt of a billion dollars that you owe me. Why didn't you show the same compassion? Why didn't you show the same mercy to your fellow servant or your coworker that I showed you? In anger, the king turned on that servant over to the prison guard, turned him over and his family uh, to be tormented until the debt was repaid. Now watch this moral of this. In the same way, my heavenly father, Jesus was talking, would deal the same way 
uh, with you, with any of you, if you do not release forgiveness for anybody, from your heart, from especially toward one of your fellow believers, your brother or your sister. It doesn't make any difference if they're black, brown, red, yellow, white, male or female. Now, uh, to be turned over to the torment is to be turned over to the attack of the enemy, uh, to be tormented or tortured. Your heavenly father would do the same thing. Wow, he will turn you over to the torment if you do not forgive. You mean forgiveness will keep me out? Yes, forgiveness will keep you out. That will block and stop the uh, you from receiving or being blessed with God's best in your life and in the next life. Now watch this. We have, we have to forgive from the heart, from the inside out. But forgiveness is also an act of your will. It's a choice. It, wow. In my own life, I find that I will. I choose to forgive people. God gives me the ability to do it, and he will give you the same ability. But it really starts with a choice. Forgiveness is not an emotion, sons and daughters of God. It's not a feeling. It's a decision. It's a choice. Wow. So when we stay, when we say, oh, I, I, I cannot forgive, what we're really saying is that we can't release our feelings or our emotions about it. Let God help you with your feelings. Let God help you with your emotions about a situation or about a person or about some person. Make a quality decision or choice to forgive because God would have to do it. Wow. God would have you to do it. Amen. For them so he can forgive you. And if you will forgive that person, it will release you to forgiveness. Make it an act of your choice today. If you're holding out there or in here and you're holding something against someone alone 30, 40 years ago, some of you may not be that old, uh, as young as I am, 75 going on 25, uh, uh, and you have an art against somebody, forgive the person, release them, let that go, because it's better for you that you let them go and that you release that. When we ask God uh, for the ability to forgive, it's a Holy Spirit ability that we can receive. It's supernatural, sons and daughters of God. The Word of God commands us to forgive. Now watch this. To forgive, and once you make that choice to forgive, or to obey the Word of God, He will give you the same ability to fulfill His Word, to complete His Word. If you, it's always an act of faith and an act of your will. You have to make, you make a choice to get up and go to church, you make a choice to get up and go to work, you make a choice to get up, uh, the young people make a choice to get up and go to school, you make a choice to get up and make breakfast or drink some coffee in the morning, you make a choice, everything you do in life is a choice. God is given us a choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. So we have to make the right choice if we want to be, uh, don't want to be stopped from being blessed with God's best. Now, as we go on and we act on down, I must a uh, will to forgive, then ask for the ability to forgive and God will impart it. Now, in Mark 11, 25 and 26, we're almost at our la uh, last one. Uh, Moses, uh, Mark says, uh, in his, he was standing, uh, talking about standing in prayer. He said, when you stand praying and you forgive, that your heavenly Father may forgive you. It's important right here. This is an important point to understand that forgiveness comes again as an act of your will, not in your emotion. And an act of your decision to obey the word of God. We must draw on God's supernatural forgiving ability. All right. Choose to forgive. Act on the word of God. Draw on heaven's ability. All three are necessary. Choosing to forgive. Acting on the word of God. And drawing on the ability of heaven. Now, the last one. And we all, we might, we're not going to finish that. Uh, it's called bitterness. And it comes from the word resentment or hurt. Uh, anger, and it comes from the word hostility, it comes from the word animosity or feeling bad towards another person. In, uh, it literally means poison. It's poison. Bitterness is a poison on the inside of you. And uh, the, in, in Hebrews 12 and 15, I'm going to read that as we draw on down to a close. Hebrews 12 and 15. And it reads as such. I trust that you are enjoying this. I know I do a lot of teaching, but teaching shows you how to live the kingdom way. Preaching inspires you. 
And it goes on and it says it here in the 15th verse. It says, watch over each other to make sure that no one misses the revelation of God's favor in your life. And make sure that no one lives with a, with a, with a root of bitterness that's coming up from the inside of them and, and uh, which will only cause trouble and pardon the hearts of many, many people. Whoa, wow. And so a root of bitterness is a root under the ground that can't be seen. Amen. You, you may go along and feel like you have everything already taken care of, that you have the unforgiveness dealt with because you, you can't see it. But, uh, but a way to know if there is something there, it will trigger the unforgiveness. It will spring up. Wow, did I say that? And it will spring up and stuff will come out of your mouth about things that you didn't even know that were there. You thought that you had dealt with that thing. You thought you had already handled it, but you hadn't. It. And this, you would be surprised what would come out of your mouth because you thought you had it under the blood. You thought you had it under control. And then all of a sudden, you're having an emotional outburst. You're, or either some of us have temper tantrums. I know I've been there, done that. I know nobody in here have, have spiritual temper tantrums where they have an emotional Albert, right. All right. And so, and a, about a situation of somebody who did something. It's exploding or from the inside of you, coming up when you least expect it. You're not, if you're not careful, it can spring up at a time when you're right in front of people and they will look at that, they will see the explosion and they wonder, what in the world happened to Dr. Clark? Did, I thought he was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, tongue talking. I thought he was walking in love all the time. Oh, no, I, I didn't see. Did I say that? Wow. And so you'll see what comes out of it. It's better to pray and, the, and, and, and ask the Lord to locate the roots of it on the inside. It's better to look at your neighbor and say, it's better to pray. See, it's better to pray and ask the Lord to, to find that root of bitterness down on the inside. How do I know? But say this with me. Been there. Been there. Done, that. Done that. Not going back. Not going back. This, is better. this is better. Amen. Isn't it good? Are we going to are, are we are we going through these foxes? Are we going through these little things? We are telling you how to deal with them in this series. Ask the Holy Spirit to locate, to help you find these bitterness, these offenses, and all these other things. And, and uh, pray this prayer. Holy Spirit, show me if there's any hidden root of bitterness and help me to deal with them, to pull those out, to uproot them. I don't need those in my life, and I don't want them in my life. I'll say that again. Holy Spirit, show me if there's any hidden roots of bitterness, if there's any bitterness that's hiding down on the inside of me, and help me to deal with these little bitterness thing because these are the things that will st stop you from being blessed with God's bless. Wow. I don't need them in my life. Ephesians 4 31 and 32 says this. It said let all bitterness and anger and wrath and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another. Another, tender hearted toward one another, forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Notice it says let all bitterness be put away from you. In other words, get rid of that stuff out of, get that junk out of your trunk. Oh, did I say that? Yes, I did. You have to put them away. Amen. You have to deal with them. How do I know? I've had to deal with them in my own life. If you don't know where they are, ask God to help you find them. He will, if you sincerely ask him for something that is beneficial to his kingdom, Amen. And to your spiritual walk with him, he will jump on that quickly, move on it and swiftly and help you deal with it. He really does answer our prayers. I don't know about you, but I know he answers mine all of the time. And then. Uh, let me let me make a comment on the rest of this. Remember that uh, the Bible says in Hebrews 13. And six, that the Lord is your helper. And so you don't have to be afraid. We'll talk about fear the next time. You don't, uh, you don't have to be afraid. Uh, uh, just trust in the Lord because fear is a trap. You're not going to be afraid what man can, can do to you if you obey the word of God, if you act on the word of God in every area of your life. Uh, uh, 
Paul said in Hebrews, he said he talks about people who uh, are subject to bondage because of, they were afraid of dying. They, 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 they're afraid about being tormented. It was a, they were trapped in fear. And fear binds you and locks you up and keeps you from becoming what you could be for God. So we're going to talk about that the next time. So we must enter into the love of God, and I'll say that again next time, and the faith of God to overcome all of these things that we talked about today. We talked about insecurities, deceiving yourself, unforgiveness, and talk about uh, bitterness. We, we should be able to do that. We should be able to, to enter into the love of God, enter into the courtroom of, of heaven, and stay in there and know that you're always in God's presence. At some time, you're going to have to know that God loves you so much that he's going to take care of you, and you must trust in his love. If you really trust somebody and you know they have the ability to bless you or to help you, then you don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen if it don't look like it's going to work out on the outside. God always works things out. He works it out while you're trying to figure it out. And as I close, when, when we are facing things in life and understand that our Heavenly Father is bigger than our, any problem and, and won't drop us, we can jump into his arm knowingly that he's going to catch us, knowing that he's going to care for us, knowing it's going to, everything is going to be all right. Cur perfect love, which is God's love, throws out fear. And our, our Father, he won't drop us like it's hot. He won't drop us like a hot potato. He won't drop us like a hot coal. He will, he will, he will, he he am, he, we are his prized possession. We are the apple of his eye. I am his son. You are his son. You are his daughter. And he loves you. I don't, I don't have to be afraid. And you don't have to be afraid about the future. All your needs are met. About what, uh, you don't have to be afraid about what is going to happen tomorrow because he is there to catch you. I, you can trust him because you know he loves you. What can, what, what can man do to you? God is your strength and your song. He is your salvation. He is your shelter in which you can and hide and be safe. Trust in God and he will destroy any of these little things that are in your life, but you got to turn them over to him. Praise God for another day and for another privilege and for another opportunity to share with you the living word of God. We thank you uh, for turning on again, turning, turning up, tuning in to the kingdom frequency here where we always have a fresh revelation, fresh spiritual food for your spirit, soul, and body directly from the courtroom and the throne room of heaven. We trust that you've enjoyed it. Make sure that you reach out and like and share and subscribe. Again, this blesses us so we can continue to be a blessing to you for your spiritual enrichment and edification. We just love you to life and there's absolutely nothing you could ever, 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 ever think of doing about it. We'll see you real soon. Kingdom blessings.